Following Germany's surrender in May 1945, the Luftwaffe was largely grounded and then disbanded entirely in 1946. Most of its aircraft were long since scrapped by that date. However, three nations in particular continued production of World War II era German aircraft, which continued in service in some cases into the 1970s. Many of these post-war aircraft continue flying all over the world, though usually painted to portray World War II German planes. France began producing German aircraft even before the war ended. This was because the Germans had ordered French aircraft firms to license-build Luftwaffe aircraft. When the Germans retreated out of France in the late summer of 1944, these firms came back under French control, and production of aircraft continued. Now for the French Air Force. One of the earliest post-war French fighters was the SNCAC NC900, which is, as you can see, the Luftwaffe Focke-Wulf FW190 fighter. In this case, the Germans had established a repair and modification workshop in a quarry in France during the occupation. Abandoned by retreating German forces, Free French forces found a huge stockpile of fuselages and wings for the FW 190A5 and A6 models. Hundreds of BMW 801 engines were also found at a special storage facility in the Dordogne. The decision was taken to start assembling FW 190s under the new name of NC 900, with around 65 to 70 aircraft being built in total. The last left French service in 1949. All but one was scrapped, with a single example, ironically in Luftwaffe markings, preserved as a static museum exhibit. Of greater utility to the French was the Messerschmitt BF-108 Typhoon, which was being manufactured in German-occupied France under license. 170 BF-108s were built in France for the Luftwaffe before the Germans departed. The type was used as a communications and liaison aircraft. At the Nord facility, the Free French continued to build BF-108s using remaining German parts and engines, calling the resulting French Air Force aircraft the Nord Penguin. Later versions received French Renault engines. Altogether, 286 Penguins were built for use by the French armed forces in the same role as the Messerschmitt 108. Many are still flying today, usually disguised as Luftwaffe Typhoons. One of the best aircraft of its type produced in World War II was the Fieseler Fi-156 Stork liaison aircraft, renowned for its excellent short field performance and extraordinarily low stalling speed. A hundred and forty-five were captured and pressed into service by the British. Field Marshal Montgomery had his own stork, and many other World War II leaders on the Allied side also used them as personal aircraft. 64 of these captured storks were later given to the Free French by the British. The Germans licensed built the stork in occupied France using Moraine Zulnier, and following liberation, the French Air Force requested that production continue under the name MS 500 Criquet. Many saw service in French Indochina in the 1950s, and by the end of production in 1965, some 965 MS-500s had been built. Again, many are still flying, often in World War II Luftwaffe paint schemes. One of Germany's most famous World War II transport aircraft was the Junkers Ju-52 Trimotor, the backbone of the Luftwaffe supply fleet and famous for dropping paratroopers. Most of the Junkers-built aircraft were destroyed in the war or scrapped fairly soon afterwards, but again some production had been licensed out to France during the war, to Avion Amio. And with a requirement for transport aircraft, the French Air Force simply ordered continued production of the Ju-52 post-war, though under the new designation Amio AAC-1 Toucan. The French built 415 Toucans, which serve worldwide. Four airworthy examples still exist, and many are in museums, as static exhibits. Spain also built Junkers 52s post-war. 
The Spanish firm Casa built 106 352s and 64 upgraded 352L versions. They remained in Spanish Air Force service well into the 1970s, used, amongst other things, as parachute trainers. Today, 17 Casa 352L versions survive, with two of them airworthy and one being restored to flight. Another iconic World War II German aircraft that saw extensive post-war service was the Heinkel HE-111 bomber. Fascist Spain received a batch of Heinkel HE-111 H-16s from Hitler in 1943, and an agreement to license build the type in Spain. Casa built 236 211s, as they were called, between 1945 and 1956, the main difference with the German type being the use of British Merlin engines. The type wasn't retired until 1973. Twelve Casa 211s still exist, though none are currently airworthy. The Spanish also liked the World War II Messerschmitt Bf 109G fighter. In 1942, Spain reached an agreement with the German government to license build the type with engines, instruments and weapons supplied by Messerschmitt. Germany couldn't manage this and the Spanish replaced the engine, creating the Hispano HA-1109J1L. The HA-1112K1L appeared in May 1951 with 65 being built. The final version was the now famous HA-1112 M1L, known as the Bouchon, which was in service in Spain between 1954 and 1965, powered by the Rolls-Royce Merlin, the engines being bought as surplus from the UK. 239 Bouchons were built and 36 survive today, with 11 of them airworthy. They usually appear as Luftwaffe Messerschmitt 109s, though the Merlin engine's large air intake does ruin the effect. Czechoslovakia, a post-war communist country, also manufactured a version of the ME-109. Czechoslovakia captured many intact 109Gs in 1945, but inevitably spares ran out, including Daimler-Benz DB605 engines. In Czech service, they were called the Avia S-199, and some 600 captured or post-war constructed planes were made up to 1949. Israel used the type fitted with the Junkers Yumo 211F bomber engine. They were not particularly popular. The last examples were withdrawn from Czechoslovak service in 1957. Perhaps the most ambitious post-war construction of German aircraft was Czechoslovakia's creation of the Avia S-92, basically the Messerschmitt ME-262A1A jet fighter. As some ME-262s were produced in a German-controlled facility in Czechoslovakia, the Czechs simply continued production. From August 1946, Avia built nine single-seat S-92s and three two-seater CS-92 trainers, and they served as frontline fighters until 1951, until replaced by Soviet jets. One example of each type has been preserved in the Czech Republic today. Many German training and liaison aircraft designs were kept in production for post-war air forces. France, for example, built 240 SNCAC Martinet, copies of World War II Zeebel SI-204 aircraft. The Czechs also built this design, producing 179. The Arado AR-96B proved popular. Avia built 228 between 1945 and 1960, and let off 182. The Czech Aero C-104 was a version of the Bucher Bu-131B, while Zlin built 405 copies of the Bucher Bu-181 Bestmann up to 1953. There were several other types of Luftwaffe trainer widely licensed-built post-war. So the next time you're at an air show and you see a flying World War II Luftwaffe plane, it is almost certain to be a post-war license-built copy dressed up to look the part. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton.
You can also help to support both of my channels, PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below. Thank you.